So our first big topic of the day, since we are talking about MMOs, what is the biggest MMO out there? Still? Hello Kitty Hello. Online. Yep. <laughs> Island Adventure. I, you know, that that game went offline. Sorry. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> the World of Warcraft is that big game we're talking about, okay? Because I've been hearing, I hear it because I'm not really actually playing it. Because even though I have retail, I have the subscription. You know, the Battle for Azeroth, what, 8.3 got dropped, and apparently people don't like it. And we're going to talk about that. But the other thing is the fact that Warcraft 3 came out, Reforged, and it wasn't very good. People are having problems with it. they like wondering, what is Blizzard doing? So in all that together, I thought about, here's a good topic, and have a discussion about everything involved with that. Plus, how or could this affect Shadowlands coming out? Because everyone has jumped back into retail that I know after doing Classic because they want to play Shadowlands. And now with this whole debacle coming up with 8.3 Battle for Azeroth, with the Warcraft re Reforged. Anyways, that's the topic for this first portion of it. This, this is all on you guys, so uh, go for it. Have you been playing BFA, um, Tsharzio? I did. I, I, I returned to Battle for Azeroth to retail. I uh, kind of was put in the same spot that, that you are in yourself, where we, we had this guild going, and it everything seemed to be going in the right direction. We had people that had great interest at first, that first month especially, and then uh, just one by one, we had less and less and less people logging into Classic, and more and more and more of them were just going back to retail. And it got to the point where I just saw that it was going to be impossible to really rebuild, because at that point, uh, most people had already you know, joined guilds and... Uh, there weren't terribly many people coming to the game uh, fresh to be able to recruit from. And it was going to take so much work to mm. to recruit, especially being that, you know, the rating in Classic is 40 people. And you're, you're going to have to have double that in, in bodies in the guild in order to meet that demand and, and have a consistent group of people to pull from to raid, which was what our primary objective was in classic. And like I said, it just got uh, to the point where I was like, you know what? I, I don't, I'm going to go ahead and, and give retail another try being that 8.3 was coming yep. out. Same here. And uh, did end up coming out, I think a week after I went back to retail mm -hmm. and, uh, you know what? I, I, I eight point three was fine. Okay. Um, I wasn't real happy with how they've wrapped things up as far as the end of the raid. Uh, I thought it was, uh, it's kind of a let down. The, this, you know, story wise, again, as someone that's really into the lore and the story of it, the RPG part of it uh i just uh, i don't know mm. i just felt kind of it felt flat for me okay and right now uh being that they they're saying that 8.35 is not going to happen this is it oh that's here that's right yeah that's the other news right they're not right one. they're not going to do 0.5 this is pretty much it they are going to do pre-patch content there's going to be some always do right yeah some fun things we'll put the bunny ears out for now fun things <laughs> fun things to do to prepare for it but other than that this is it this is all the raids we're getting all the dungeons we're getting all the, the they just want to move on from bfa uh i'm pretty sure that's their way of saying they understand that this is a, a dumpster fire and they just <laughs> want to get out of it well there was and, some, uh, wasn't there some concern that they don't do 0.5 that Somehow, then I know they always do the pre-loading of Shadowlands on people's computers. But if they're not going to have this point five, then they're. Mm -hmm. I thought I was reading or hearing that there won't be that that preload for Shadowlands. Uh, I was hearing that from a couple of sources as well, but I don't believe that's true. 
Okay. I have seen on the forums that some of the, uh, at least three of the devs have stepped up and said, no, there is going to be some pre patch okay. content. But Well, it makes sense. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I'm pretty sure they're going to do something. I think it'll probably be along the lines of what they did with uh, Legion, uh, where they had the invasions happening in the, in the old world. And uh, I, I'm okay with that. The, the, the problem that I had was, was again, like the raid, just the, the ending of it fell flat for me. The way we uh, conquered Inzoth was just uh, Nazoth. Excuse me, I keep saying Inzoth. <laughs> <laughs> um, was just kind of lame. Uh, and really, because we know that there's not another big patch coming, the grind that we're on right now for a current uh, gearing up and whatnot feels pointless to me. Uh, like the the cape oh. that we got is going to be immediately replaced upon Shadowlands mm. coming out. Right, right. Uh, what are we gearing up for? <laughs> yeah, well, that's I, actually a good point. Yeah, I just feel like I'm on a hamster wheel to nowhere, mm. uh, and I think a lot of the complaints revolve around that, just worded differently. Honestly, it's a fair statement. So then yeah. let me let me ask you though uh in terms of population in, in um uh classic have you noticed a, a noticeable decline in population did it like just spike up and then spike way ba way back down or mm, no no it was kind of a gradual thing Oh really from okay what i noticed it there were people that did the 3 month and 6 month subscriptions mm -hmm. uh when they were on sale at the time Oh. And those uh, subs are coming up pretty like this month, I believe, right? right. Or next month. So um, I think that is when we're going to see some drops. But according to, because I do have stock uh, shares with um, Blizzard Activision, mm -hmm. I, I get the little reports. And according to those reports, uh, Classic's doing really good. Oh, really? Them. Even still? Yes. Well, that's good. Yes. So it has dropped, but it's uh, done really good things for them and done good things for my stock shares. Uh, <laughs> they mm -hmm. uh, have doubled subscriptions since this time last year. Oh, so, good, good. Yeah, so I would say that as far as uh, World of Warcraft goes, it definitely helped um, bring people back, but uh, I just don't the longevity of it is still left to be determined mm -hmm. uh, because like I said, there, I think there's only one more um, patch of them or two, maybe there's two more patches of them adding content in, and then that's going to be it. So they're, so, they're not going to do burning crusade or whatever it was after it. They haven't that, mentioned it yet. Yeah, really? Okay. They're kind people of asking for it, but people have been asking for it but they're just saying hey let's just see where this goes and we all know right where it's going to go is a year from now people are going to be bored and asking for burning crusade yeah. so okay. after shadowlands well, comes out everyone finishes the content of shadowlands are going to say where's the class yeah. again hopefully they're mm. working on it in the background and they announce it at the next blizzcon and we're all yeah. shocked and happy and <laughs> yeah uh, so let me ask yeah because the world warcraft 3 reforged all oh, the gosh. promises made oh, were gosh. broken so <laughs> and i know it's separate dev it could be separate devs okay and so it i know is. that now they finally held out automated uh refunds okay will this affect it has just is this like a direct reflection of blizzard because what makes one think that shadowlands will have any chance of being good with the up and down up and down, good and bad of the DLC or not DLC expansions. When you have Warcraft Three or Four, which should have been a simple, simple fix and simple update and simple clean and wonderfully approved and not Metacritic below one score, do you think it's going to affect Shadowlands? I think the trend's mm. been going on the decline since uh, their announcement of the Diablo mobile game. Like ever since that <laughs> announcement, it's just been bad news for Blizzard every single time for the past year, <laughs> you know? So I, I think I think culturally, I think Blizzard's a completely different company because of Activision. At least that's what people are pointing the finger at. And mm -hmm. so uh yeah, in the overall scheme of things, I think uh it, it is a symptom, if you will, of things to come possibly. I, it's really 
how do I say this in a, uh, <laughs> there's a saying, uh, it's an old Irish saying, but it's kind of crude. So I'll try to put it in family friendly terms, but the turds roll downhill. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Put it that way. There you go. And, uh, what that means for those who aren't in the business world is that, uh, it, the people on top, you can see what's going on at the top by looking at the people on the bottom and what the product is that's being put out and for the past few years it's been rather obvious that it has gone from a company that is made up of gamers making games for other gamers to uh sweat house workers uh, <laughs> um some of the lowest paid devs in the gaming industry sir charles uh, don't you have phones don't you don't you have phones yeah uh, well, and they've been, they've been, you know, they, they sold that out to another, to a Chinese or well, right. That's right. M- mostly Chinese company. Tencent, right. Um, I think see- take that over and you know, the, the problem with that is that they have a completely different way of doing games over there. They, exactly. it's very gotcha. Um, everything is pay to win and if you aren't able to keep throwing money at them every month then um, you're not going to be able to be competitive uh and unfortunately you know they threw the beloved D- diablo franchise at a company that that operates that way and you just know that once it does come out there it's probably going to be one of those oh it's free download me and then you're going to get so far into it and get stuck because you've got to pay (laughs) 29.99 to buy this package yeah you know to buy the gems that you use to buy something else that is used to buy something else and then you find out how little that's actually worth and you've got to throw another 50 bucks and another 50 bucks and kind of like the clash of clans thing that was going on a few years ago that i had friends that were dumping literally hundreds of dollars into these phone games to stay competitive for Uh, clash of clans though i mean i get yeah no but clash of clans (laughs) Uh, i don't know why man but i had a advertising they had what's her name right the uh the supermodel Oh no, that Being was the... that was a different. Was Clash of Clans? Game, wasn't it? That... Was it Clash of Clans? I thought it was. Oh, was it the one with Upton, Megan Fox? Right? Oh, never mind. Not oh yeah, 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 yeah. I think it was Kate Upton. Kate Upton. I thought that was Kate, something... Kate Upton. Yeah, thank you. That was a different game, I think. All right, so you're thinking. But... So I'm going to back to this fact because you know, BlizzCon 2019 was I thought was fabulous. I know that they apologized for the whole Hong Kong thing somewhat. Uh... Somewhat. Exactly <laughs> I completely but forgot about have, that. Now, we know that the <laughs> Blizzard cinematics are fantastic. Oh, yeah. They oh, did yeah. a great job with Diablo 4, right? Diablo 4. Great one with mm-hmm. Shadowlands because it was like talking about the Ice Crown Citadel and, you know, just taking the crown from the, oh, my gosh, the Lich King. And then they had, so all that was good stuff. And, and it's including Warcraft 3 Reforged. Because they even talking about the fact that the cinematic was like this thing, and then here it blows apart. So, I guess we'll have to wait. But it feels like Blizzard is, like they said, after a downward slope. But like Shadowlands isn't going to be all that great, even though the way, that, like you mentioned, the different expansions have been up, down, up, down, up, the down. Pattern, yeah. So down with B of A, up with it Legion for be. this. So next one should be up with uh, Shadowlands. I. As far as did it hurt it, to, to answer it more directly and not go off on the separate rails there, um, my issue is is what they did with, and why I'm not pre-ordering is what they did with Warcraft 3. Mm, we were enough. promised, uh, I know I talked on the show this morning, right. I talked a little bit about some of the things, and that was just a fraction of the things that were wrong with the game. And by the way, after that, broadcast this morning i did end up re- getting it refunded <laughs> oh <laughs> i did get it refunded okay because i you know while i was talking to you guys on the podcast right. i was like you know what i'm I, this really is a, a pile of poop <laughs> it's <laughs> not good and we i don't think they purposefully did a bait and switch it just 
that's how it worked out. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, we were yeah. promised uh, two different scenarios, one with uh, Lady Jaina Proudmore and another with Sylvanas. Um, those were removed from the game because they thought it would add too much and people would be upset because it wasn't close. It wasn't in the original, but we were promised that when we pre-ordered it. Yeah. Um, they took they removed two hours. Uh, actually, it was a little bit more than two hours worth of cinematics that they had added into the game um, because they felt that people would be upset that they added that much to the game, even though it went along with story. It was just giving further information. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, they removed uh, several modes of PVP uh, and they didn't really give a reason for that other than maybe, maybe they'll add them back in later. Right. Um, there, there was just so much. And then the game just ran really poorly even on a really good uh, modern machine yeah. like i'm on right now it ran like i was on a computer from back in 2000 <laughs> it was horrible and uh you know for the fact that we paid uh and it was 35 dollars, by the way that was the other thing i wasn't sure how much i had paid when i was talking to you guys and uh you know, I could go get Age of Empires right now on Steam for twenty bucks, right? And it runs fan. I I actually do have it now. It runs fantastic and is just loads more fun. And they're coming out with brand new content for it. Yep. Uh, so, man, I they just really botched it really poorly. And I yep. I you can tell that they were rushed that they probably worked them. They, they had the candles burning at both ends for them devs and they were just burnt out and just like, you know what? It time's up, get it out. I know, but it should never commit to something. I mean, I know they, they did this. They announced it at BlizzCon 2019, but they also announced it like a year before that. So mm. there was even an update. People saw an update on their accounts. Like, Oh, what's that going on here? Cause they're getting ready for it. So it's right. not like it's brand new, but it makes you wonder. Yeah, they made a promise that March, you know, February, whatever it is, January, and it didn't happen. They, they should have just said, guys, there was more to this than this. We found some code that was an issue, and it'll take us longer. So just give us uh, six months, and we'll get it right. Well, it, and, that, and like I said those, this morning, just to, real quick, um, that's the way Blizzard was before Activision and them joined forces. Mm is that they said we're not giving release dates until we are absolutely sure this product's ready to go on the shelves. Yeah. And they really need to go back to that. You know, it's okay to make a promise. I'm sorry. It's okay to make a date and change it. I mean, we saw that with mm -hmm. Cyberpunk 2077. I mean, True. all of us in the game community, we, yes, we like dates. Okay. We like dates. You want to mm. come out. want to come out. I mean, after all, I've kickstarted how many games now that have been delayed one, two, three years. But we really want a game that we paid for to be good. We're willing to wait. I mean, you think about the different games we waited for years for, okay? And you're like, okay, well, it's been how many years since this happened? So, boom. I'm willing to wait. A lot of us are willing to wait because this is, this is this, we want a good game, not a slapdash game. Right. All right, let's move on to the next topic, okay? So that what we want to try to do is every week is talk about a big MMO. <laughs> Great. So Alan Ray is down in the chat. Hey, Alan, how's it going? <laughs> what is this riffraff you brought into your channel? There's no standard of quality here. I expected more from you, Trizazio. <laughs> All right, anyways, we're going to talk about some smaller MMOs, okay? There's one that was on the horizon or at least been talked about recently is a game called Camelot Unchained. For those who don't know, mm. Mark Jacobs, who is one of the founding members of Mythic Studios, who did who did Dark Age of Camelot, as well as Warhammer, and some other things, okay? Uh, they sold their company to EA. Yeah, EA, EA Mythic. It ended up being EA Mythic Bioware. Finally, Mythic is gone. Dark Age of Camelot was sold out so many words. Anyways, he created a new studio called City State Entertainment, and he kickstarted a game called Camelot Unchained. And for me, I kickstarted this game because it's Mark Jacobs' game. Similar to Camelot, uh, Dark Age of Camelot, it had the RVR aspect of it. A great, it's been delayed. That's fine because they created a new engine. They have, an, they have a studio on the East Coast and the West Coast in Seattle area. 
great. It's fun. They got funding behind it. Not just us or me, but others, bigger donor and bigger investors. And then they said they announced this new game. Like, what? Where's Kimmel Unchained? Well, this is a new game coming out. Like, what? People were kind of confused and upset with this because, like, hey, there's a new game that we paid for that we didn't pay for. Like, what's going on here? And he was like, no, 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 no. This is a game that is because built on the engine, you know, not the same people or same resources being applied directly to that, to sit, to Kemal and Chain. But here it is. This will help us. By the way, this game got us additional funding from other people. It's all good. People are like, where's the uh, refund button? Okay. People are upset. Okay. Now I'm thinking, I personally, as a Kickstarter person, I don't care. I'm still waiting for that game. Hey, if there's another game coming out too, good. Good for me. It's all be free because it'll be my game also. So what do you guys uh what do you guys know of this and what do you guys think? <laughs> I'm a star citizen backer, so uh <laughs> I know we were chatting about it before this. I get it. Day, so yeah, go ahead, you know. Well, I I if if I had to pick and choose, I get where the outrage is coming from. Because the uh the game was originally supposed to come out back uh last year in December, but then they delayed it. And Jacob said, okay, well, if you want to refund, we, you know, I, he said, I I get it. You can refund it. We made a promise and we didn't deliver. So if you want to refund the game, refund the game. And then he goes and says, like, even if the intentions were good, even if, like you said, like, uh, you know, we're developing this new game and we got additional funding for it. Isn't that great? And you guys will get this game for free, but it's like, that's not what we're paying you to make. (laughs) So, so even if he got more money, it's just like you're he's still he still diver even even if he, and I think he also claimed that he used none of the funding to make this game. He right. still diverted his resources, time and talent and energy into something that um that wasn't necessarily but what people how much? wanted. Yeah, that's I the mean, question. How much, how much right? I mean, it looks like I a simple think... game, but if there was a direct correlation saying this game was gonna be released in March and now it's gonna be released in July because of this, that's one thing. But it's more like it doesn't change the time frame, and our and our delay isn't because of this game or anything else. Then I don't know. I I I get it though. Like I I to me, it still feels a little shady. You know what I mean? Because he he had you know that you know that stupid meme. He had one job. <laughs> one job. Yeah, he had one job. He had one job, and and here he's doing something else. When we're we you know um. If this scenario was any other, um, any other way, like if he was a AAA, you know, game company who got funding, you know, the traditional way as all AAA game companies do, then I think people would have been a little bit more lenient. But the fact that he, you know, because this was a Kickstarter, uh, campaign or funded project, I think it just made that, you know, yeah, it, it twisted that well, dagger a little bit more. A so little bit. I, I would, I would agree with you a hundred percent if it was all Kickstarter money, okay. So, because when I first started this game back in, I don't know, 2013, because I'm looking at it right now, it says original delivery was be December 2015, okay? Oh, wow. So See? Four years, yes. The original game is always four years over. So, I know along the way, over the course of time, okay, he got other backers. So, it's not like it's everything, the money, the Kickstarter people put into it is the same money being used. He got other backers. He also put more more his money into it also so he's so also was, f- sorry go ahead go ahead what you say no i was gonna say so so he's also uh suffering from feature feature creep as uh as roberts is from star citizen you could argue that yeah same with the uh, you know uh star citizen so i mean i look at that fact that okay, if the kickstarter was here and all that money was being used okay and now it's his new game come out which he didn't say because after all my pledge was for the for something else that's fine thing but if, it, if he did this and he refunded, and he did all the other things in the in the backers of all this, and there's this other in the other game here that comes out along the way. And by the way, it also increases more funding overall for his studio to continue working on it. I'm like, okay, I want a game. I know it's been four years waiting for this game, and I want a good game. And I still trust Mark Jacob because he's very open. He's very open in talking to the community, expressing his you know apologizing and whatnot. So I still support him. And this game, by the way, coming out, I don't, I haven't really seen about more about it. Actually, shows me there's a game, which means, wait a minute. So your 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 engine does work because he had to create a new engine for this. I said one thing he wasn't planning on doing, if I recall, he wasn't planning on creating a new engine. So he did create a new engine. And if this game works, then hey, that that verifies the engine works. It verifies that the what we're going to get from 
Camelot Unchained actually might be a decent game. So I don't know. I just think so. I think he should make a battle royale next now. <laughs> oh no! So I know Ashes of, in this comparison <laughs> is to Ashes, Ashes of Creation. No. It's exactly Ashes what I was going to get. Is another game I kickstarted, and they dropped a battle royale, but it was only because they were trying to test the actual combat. Okay, and people got really upset, going, "Wait a minute! I bought the other game." Yeah, but this is just a this is like a alpha or beta, just trying the combat in a battle royale situation, and people were like, "What? I want my refund." I'm like. So I'm back again going, well, if this is the way, a pathway to the final game, I'm okay with it as a Kickstarter person. But I, I don't I'm not know. trying to break my back, by the way, Alan. I'm a little skeptical about that Battle Royale part. I mean, I know we're kind of digressing a little bit, but I think I think the people over at Ashes were really trying to capitalize on the Battle Royale scene. I mean, because there, there's, there's other ways you could test out the combat. You don't necessarily have to make a Battle Royale yeah, to test it. I, I agree with that. But True. I mean, I that's all why speculation. Not? Why not hit the hit the iron while it's hot? Try your combat in a mode that everyone's talking about right now. Yeah, but that's not what people uh, uh, kickstarted the the game for, though. They didn't want a battle royale game. I know. I and so Ashes, by the way, was supposed to release December twenty eighteen, so it's a year behind. Oh yeah, and that I just yeah. I, I find the whole thing pretty awful, honestly. I I've gone on both sides. Uh, the the problem that I see is when you as a business promise your consumers, especially people that have invested in your company to make a specific product, it, it is on you. That is your obligation and your primary focus should be on getting that out there to those people that have invested in it. Right. And that's that that is admirable that he has came out and said, Hey, this is what happened. Um, and it actually is going to help us be able to invest more Fair statement. into, in, into that product and make it even better for all of you. But at the same time, it also, is, <laughs> it kind of reminds me of that movie up with that dog, Doug, that when he does the whole squirrel thing squirrel, squirrel, squirrel. that, yeah, Honestly, I don't think that he went to make that other game because he was trying to test out the the infrastructure of, of the original game he was working on. I think that he just had this <laughs> other idea and he thought, hmm, yeah. I want to try this for a little bit. I want to take a break. I'm going to work on something Maybe. else. Uh, I, I know that I, I'll say I know I, my son met the, the <clears throat> CEO at PAX. West mm -hmm. 2018, he was at a panel. He was like, oh my gosh, this is the game one. He was at first a little shy about talking to him, right? But he, after having some alcohol, he was felt, he was, I remember seeing him in this group of people, right? Now we went up there, right? And it was, it was the CEO of Intrepid Studios, right? Talking about the game, mm -hmm. everything about it, right? My son just loved everything they were talking about, okay? It was a like, great. Over the course of time afterwards, as he's learned more about it, he started souring on it. And I don't think the Battle Royale helped out much for him. So I get that fact, and I understand from your guys' point of view, you're right. I made a commitment through Kickstarter. This is the game I wanted, and you're giving me this. That's not what I, now, I, I, now, mind you, I have other Kickstarter games that have not pro have promised me something and didn't deliver. And that's one of the things I accept as a Kickstarter. Again, so, it's the same thing we just got done talking about, Warcraft 3 Reforged. <laughs> the same thing. Yeah, they yeah, told us yeah. we were getting one thing. Yeah, okay. We paid for it. We pre-ordered it, and we got something else. Yep. That that. Well done. <laughs> well said. That's like a mic drop. Not cool. Not cool. Mic drop. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. I mean, I'm willing to forgive Mark Jacobs and the Ashes of Creation mm -hmm. people because I still want. I know my game is still coming. Okay, but that's a fair statement. I can see now better why people are really upset. And why they want a refund? I said I was promised this, but I'm back to being a Kickstarter person. You know, going into a Kickstarter, you may not always get what you want. You're taking a chance. It's true, and you may you lose your money. I have a friend of mine who seems like every single thing he's Kickstarted always fails. <clears throat> For me, I've had success. Was a comic book, several games, including a, a comic a convention, have all successfully given me what I wanted. So I'm pretty much. But there's one game. That's very my first Kickstarter game, 
end up dying and they're coming back with a brand new different kind of game and so fine it's not what i wanted but it's better than nothing at this point <laughs> that's such a low bar <laughs> i mean mo- most of my pre-orders have been in a, a different genre altogether most of mine are albums uh from artists that are no longer on major labels uh and are trying to independently release albums almost all of them are way later getting it released um than anticipated right. but i i have got all of them except one i think uh ended up it's still in limbo somewhere out there for some reason but uh as far as games, I mean, Star Citizen, I've got money invested in that. <laughs> I don't. That's one thing I don't have. Uh, but I I am. The, you know, Alan's right. I, I am getting to the point, and I, I've said that to both of you guys, Solomon and Ken as well, that I'm getting to where I don't pre-order games anymore, man. Um, after uh, 76, and all that, that's the last one that I pre-ordered. I just, I don't have any faith in these companies anymore <laughs> man that's you know i <laughs> i'm sorry I, I, I know that's why i didn't pre-order warcraft 3 refours and i have not pre-ordered shadowlands um i know it's just sad i'm gonna wait to get the reviews for shadowlands and then i'll i'll buy it yeah I mean, right. i'm still playing wow but i know me too well not as much as i should be i know god Files keeps coming to my stream going not wow. Are you not going yet? <laughs> I'm like, no. When you pay your mechanic, that's a great. I mean, it's true. You pay him after the work's done. Yep. Yeah. All right. The next thing is a game that uh, Solomon mentioned. It's a game that I had not heard of. It's by Bandai Namco called Protocol. So I'm going to let Solomon talk this one because I have no idea. I want this is one of the things I love about the show and talking with Solomon and Jadzio. They're much more in touch with the MMO. Uh, stuff, stuff. And Solomon, if you don't watch his actual YouTube channel, you better. Okay, but uh, go ahead, Solomon. Talk about what is protocol. Thanks, Dad. I appreciate the plug. <laughs> By the way, anyone watching, he's not really my dad. It's an inside joke, and I'll explain That's why right. that later. Not no, I'll, I'll explain it loud. Like I'll explain it now. So it's not. It's not because I'm young enough to be his dad. Ken he's married. A, yeah, that, even though that is true. Ken married a Korean woman. All his children are half Korean. I'm Korean. And so I was like, hey, you, you know go. what? You're just going to be my dad now. I'm just going to call you dad. That's right. <laughs> and like, yeah, I think I'm like a, like three years uh, older than your oldest daughter. And so I was yes. like, why are you old enough to be my dad? And and you have that Korean connection well, with me. My dad was 20. <laughs> me, so oh, wow. Know, Pretty you know, young. I'm at least 20 years older than you. So yep. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Identical. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. My eyes are drying. Hang on. Ugh. <laughs> Okay, so the the MMO that I'm really looking forward to, one of the most um, MMOs that I'm looking forward to is called Blue Protocol, and it's by Bandai Namco. And um, the reason why this is this game in particular is getting a lot of um, hype is not only because so if you if you think about MMOs, they're mostly come from either China or South Korea, but mo- mostly South Korea. And so you hardly see any MMOs coming out of Japan. Uh, with the exception of like Final Fantasy fourteen or, or Final Fantasy eleven and I don't know um, Fantasy Star, so and secondly, uh, Blue Protocol is supposed to be an anime MMORPG, so it uh. uses the the tune shading technology, which I'm not a really huge big fan of, but when it comes to anime aesthetics, it, it's it's perfect. It looks absolutely lovely, and um, and so yeah, you have a bunch of weebs for lack of a better term, really just itching to get their hands on this game and and beta test it uh because um you know it 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 fills the the check marks for for all the uh uh mmos that are out there that's not or no hang on let me reword that it it checks all the boxes of of the type of mmo that's not out in the market yet um Mm. i would i would argue blade and soul is an anime mmorpg but it doesn't use tune shading it does have that manga aesthetic but it's not really an MMO a lot of people play because um I don't know, maybe they don't they just don't like the aesthetics. Maybe it's too manga like, maybe it's too anime, and then uh the combat system can get a little complicated because it's an action MMORPG. Um but and so um other than that, I can't think of any other anime MMORPG. So this 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 has the potential to be a, a really big title if uh Bandai Namco decide to uh, import it here to the United States. Hmm. Okay. 
I mean, it's a current Korean title, right? You're saying it's it's a Japanese 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 title. Okay, Japanese yeah, yeah. game. I mean, would you? I mean, Final Fantasy fourteen is not anime type of uh, graphics, or I you, when you talk about that, no one, I yeah, no one. When people talk about Final Fantasy, no one really, no one really calls it an anime uh, MMO. Yeah, I know that. Yeah, that's what's right. Curious what, High difference between the that's the actually Final a, right. That's actually a good question. Never thought of it that way. Like, what constitutes an a, uh, an anime uh, MMO or RPG as such? Right. Um, for me, just off the top of my head, I think it has to use tune shading technology or not technology, tune okay. shading aesthetics. Uh, even though I just said I would uh put Blade and Soul as an anime or uh, MMO RPG, but. When when people say anime MMORPG, they they generally like ninety nine percent they think of tune shading graphics, you okay. know. So you know something very similar very to Borderlands, Borderlands three stuff like that. So not necessarily the uh, the actual style, but more of how they actually do the shading of the overall color and the graphics, so to speak. Maybe I always find fantasy Final Fantasy fourteen or any Final Fantasy seems to be. I mean, it's a very Japanese style, right? It kind of reminds me of anime stuff, but it's, I get to how it's a little bit different. It's it's not like you see the subtle um, anime influences in Final Fantasy, mm-hmm. but it's not overtly obvious. Like, say, if you were to play like, um, uh, uh, what's that? It's like Sword Art, Sword Art Online, or or okay. you know, where where it's blatantly just an, like if you're watching an anime from like Crunchyroll, and you superimpose that to say uh sort of online the video game like it's just like graphically in terms of the character design and just the animation it, it just looks so similar and um and uh yeah i don't know if it's necessarily a subjective thing but uh if you look at blue protocol it does you, you look at that and say hey that's that's just a that's just an anime but a video game version or a video game yeah. version of it yeah I was watching it while you were talking. That's why I was curious about that. So, yeah, yeah, you I see the big eyes, you know. Yeah, Dual Shocker is talking about the fact that it's what a closed beta test is here. I guess. Yeah, yeah. So the, the closed, closed beta, the closed beta in Japan is going to begin oh, in Japan. in March. Yeah. So if you want to get in, so apparently, although this isn't uh, this isn't one hundred percent. Uh, they're speculating that the closed beta won't be uh, um, region restricted, so you don't need to go and get a VPN and stuff like that. But okay. take that with a pinch of salt. And <laughs> um, it, the beta keys will be only available for up to 50,000 players, which isn't really okay. a lot. And so um, I admittedly, in my episode that I put out today, admittedly, I would love to get into beta. So, you, you know, it would boost my channel um, exposure, you know, because, you know, Right. news that's you know things that the things that are just fresh you know right off the press like things that are new and exciting are the ones that help you get the the views for your channels and your twitch pages and stuff like that but uh no, i cool. can't uh i, I can't speak japanese up oh, cheers i don't speak japanese either i don't well a little bit my my wife and my kids but um they've been learning some korean by watching k dramas <laughs> sorry no, I know a lot of my yeah. friends uh, learn Korean. Like even even my uh, non Korean friends that that would speak better Korean know. than me because of those K dramas. Anyway, oh, sorry. So that was cool. Um, that's one thing to look out for for another email coming out, right? So now I'm gonna get we have like a discussion topic. I wanted to chat about something that I thought would be interesting from our point of view as MMOs, okay? And so, what do you want from an MMO? I mean, you're talking about like I started a bunch of MMOs for different reasons, okay? But there were reasons why I did it. There are things I want to see in an MMO. What do you want to see MMO, MMO Solomon? Uh, I want it to see. I want to. I, I want an MMO that doesn't suck. <laughs> no, I. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I'm. I've. I've been more. Um, I've been. I've been more yearning for sandbox MMOs than theme park MMOs. I, I'm. I'm so sick of theme park theme park MMOs, but I'll still play them just because you know. Uh, as a as an MMO fan, we're not we don't really have that much of a choice compared to say if you're right. into battle royale. I mean, take your pick for with battle royales, right? So, um, I I don't know some something that's a, that's an awesome. No, actually, you know, I take that back. I I just want Star Citizen. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> There's my perfect so, MMO. That I mean, if it ever comes Star out, Star Citizen, a sandbox game. Yeah, it's supposed to be. 
Uh, it's supposed to have an online element, an MMO element to it that's supposed to be very sandbox like. So you could you could be a space marine, you could be a tr- um, uh, a pirate, you could uh, uh, trade, um, you could you know do pretty much whatever you want. You know, and so if you with your ship, so okay. I was because I was going to ask you a question like, what game? Do you, what what game do you see that fits in that genre? So you just said Star Citizen. Yep, Star Citizen. All that's right. that's, that's that's what I want. So, Jazil, what do you want to see in an MMO? You know, I I really am looking forward to that uh, and kind of getting out of the. We've we've had a lot of fantasy stuff, and it would be really neat to get something sci-fi yep and yeah. and fresh you know a new ip and uh star citizen i i really am like kind of jonesing for it <laughs> I, re- I really am looking forward to playing that and and uh hope it lives up to my expectations but um I'm trying to keep them low uh <laughs> yeah you know i i and i am kind of very cautiously optimistic for Shadowlands. Uh, if the lip service that they're giving is true, right. I think that it will kind of put uh, World of Warcraft back into a good place. But uh, again, as as far as games go, I mean, I'm I really do feel like a hamster wheel is just kind of. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm playing my I'm paying my monthly fees, so I I feel obligated to play it uh kind of a situation i don't feel like i'm gearing up for any reason at all because we're going to get brand new gear that's going to replace it instantly when shadowlands comes out there's no new raids coming out so why do i need to gear up um until shadowlands comes out that is yep and uh, like i said i i just want a different atmosphere i i kind of am looking for Again, to get you know, get away from the wizards and warriors and dragons and stuff, and and have something different, have I've, a different uh, world to to put myself in. Right, I've been saying so, that there for have years. Been too. Sci-fi ones, so I mean, well, they're Star yeah, Wars there's, Republic, Defiant. True, but, I mean, Defiant, Defiant, of course. I know. <laughs> Defiant. Hello Kitty Online. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> no, okay. But I was thinking, because you mentioned, I mean, I agree with you because there's a game I saw at PAX South and West called Everspace Two. I, I don't know what Everspace oh, One yeah. is, right? Oh, where I played Everspace One. It was great. Basically, you you you're your ship, you level, you do missions, you level your ship up. It's it's yeah. it's an MMO. Well, no, it's know, not an MMO. It's yeah, it's, yeah, a, it's a single, single player, player but RPG. Yeah. The idea, I mean, again, I mean, like Defiance is a good example of a MMO that's a science fiction one that was decent. I played this. So Star Wars or Older Public is out there, uh, but they're not sandboxes. Okay, I mean that's the one thing I agree with you guys. I mean I like to do it, have a sandbox type game. One of the reasons why I Kickstarter some of the games out there. Well, I Kickstarter came out Unchained because of Mark Jacobs, but Crowfall I Kickstarter because they had the opportunity to do sandbox stuff. They actually right. build your own castle. Now, mind you, it's in your own shard, but your but your friends and your guildies, whoever it is, can come to you. That's what I hate about Fallout 4. I love Fallout 4 for the building, right. make my own little own little thing, but my friends couldn't come to it. So when Fallout 76 oh. came out, I go, great, I can now build my own thing, even though I, but land restriction was terrible. And my friends can come visit. Of course, it's a pepper dumpster fire by itself. That's why I, I want to see an MMO where I literally can feel like I'm not just, I mean, those who craft, great, but to play the game, to level up, being a guild, being an alliance, to do raiding, to make my 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 castle or my house or or affect it. That's why you know Ever, EverQuest Landmark I thought was going to be or EverQuest Next actually, but it was going to be a good game oh, because yeah. Landmark was here here guys go try out how you can destroy and build the world. And mm-hmm. the EverQuest once they sold SOE sold it to Daybreak, Daybreak decided not to do EverQuest Next. It died. Then eventually EverQuest Landmark died. And it didn't happen. So sorry, real, I, I, real quick. I, did you hear the rumors that there actually might re uh, the next EverQuest might be uh, a thing now? Yep. Okay. They, so you already know. Is, well, Daybreak. So I listened to the MMORPG 
podcast, no, no, the massively OP podcast, and they mentioned how Daybreak went and broke, uh, did some um, trademarking of other companies, mm-hmm. and one of them was like a, it was be like a land, like a yeah EverQuest type of thing. So I don't know, we'll see. But what 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 would be your answer though, Ken? Like, what would you want to see, or is that is that your answer to the question? Yeah, sandbox, like you guys said. I mean, oh, I want okay. an open world. I, mean, I love ESO, Elder Scrolls Online, because it was an open world type thing. That wasn't quite the same thing building, but it can explore anywhere. You know, you can explore and you know, find something, and not just a, it's not just a quest based quest, 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 quest. You can go explore the open world. Mm. That's why I like some of these other games. Like, even though I really have not played much of Red Dead Redemption Two. Mm-hmm. It's an open, explorable world. Right. I love just exploring the world. When I was playing Fallout 76 or even Fallout 4, I would go everywhere, just explore the world. I mean, that's one thing World of Warcraft doesn't really have. Exploring the world is like, yeah, it's fine. looks kind of cool, but it doesn't have that. So I want to I want to open world a uh, sandbox game where I can just, yeah, I can just jump in and be there. I don't want to have to leave because I don't have everything I want. I think in that aspect that right now Elder Scrolls Online and Guild Wars 2 hit those two, those notes point. pretty well. Black Desert uh, Online. Black Desert Online is pretty close. There are people who say ever, uh, Final Fantasy 14 hits those notes too. Yeah. Well, but as far as as far as yeah. sand sandbox mechanics, I can't think of a, a of an MMO that nails it better than. I would say BDO, but then I just thought Eve Online, but that that's kind of an exception Eve to the Online. rule. Yeah. But so not including Eve, I I would say BDO uh it hits the nail pretty pretty well in terms mm. of the very definition of not just you know exploration, but everything that uh incorporates a sandbox MMO in terms of the crafting, the uh the uh the economy, the um the building, the shipbuilding, and stuff like that. And uh, yeah. It's definitely not for everybody. I, I get uh, the the game has its criticisms and they're very well warranted. But again, I, I'm still <laughs> I'm still AFK fishing in the game as we speak for a reason because I just absolutely <laughs> love this game. Yeah, I started playing it and I I stopped. And I forget why I stopped. Okay, so the only people who were who played it first, beat, by the way, talking about Black Desert Online, was because they had pretty cool aspects to it. And I think it had a new trading system too, right, where you can go create a trade route between yep. different cities. Yep. And so I started doing that game, but I, I think I might have dropped out because people I knew weren't playing it. So well, if you I ever want to start, let me know. I still play yeah, it. Well, so. I've seen, I know I've seen um, the Calvin is playing in the past. Yeah, he's a, um, he's a super yeah. casual though. I don't, I wouldn't. Yeah. Uh... yeah. He is super casual. And he is the reason why I had gone back to BDO. Oh really? I, I kept trying to get him to come play WoW or yeah. ESO, and he did go try both of them, and uh, and he did like he he always does. Unfortunately, <laughs> no, I remember he we quit after like a month. We we talked and... about this. I had a similar experience with him with uh, Archage Unchained. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah and then he did. He, he all of a sudden I was like, dude, you haven't logged on in forever. Oh yeah, just kind of over it now, and I'm like, oh. It's like I bought this game because you. Back was you. Yeah, I was <laughs> wanted to play with you. <laughs> yeah, but, it. yeah. It, the, mine's the same thing. That one of the biggest factors to these games is playing with your friends. Right. And if my friends leave the game, I'm ultimately going to leave the game, even if the game is great, because it's just not. It's not fun having this you know socialization with it i mean that you know when it's late at night and i just want to chill and play some city skylines you know or something by myself listen to some music you know and you know or listen to a sermon or or whatever then you know that's great but um you know I, the the reason why i'm so into mmos is this having this interaction with my friends from you know especially ones that live so far away like like you guys, you know, I can't just, you know, drive up there and, and right. hang out with you guys on your couch in the living room, watch a, a hockey game or anything, you know? So it's like, this is the way that I hang out with my friends. And if you guys take off and play a different game, then I'm just kind of sitting there like, this isn't doing it for me anymore. Especially if I'm playing, you know, paying 15 bucks a month for it. It's like, I don't want to pay 15 bucks a month for a game that I'm playing by myself. <laughs> true true so give me yeah. give me like 
two minutes. I'll be right back. Sorry. Okay. But uh, I I really hope Star Citizen comes out soon because yeah. <laughs> I know they keep talking. So I, I joke around. That's the game that will never come out. And it's like, oh, maybe one day it will come out. I did not put money into that game, and so I'm just waiting. I mean, I know I have. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a sci-fi guy. I would love to be able to do that, and I would love to be able to. Uh, sorry, I just read what Alan said. Um, but and I know that my 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 son and his friend were really looking forward to that game coming out. I don't think they put money into it. But it's like what galls me the most about the Pasar City is, is how much they keep. Hey, here's a new ship for five thousand dollars. Go ahead and buy it. I know I'm exaggerating, okay? But I'm like, right? Really? No. Give me the game. And I know they tested the game, tested the the uh, combat and the flying. I tried that one time. It was a little clunky, had issues. Oh, I know it was it was an alpha or a beta, so it wasn't much. But but yeah, I would love to see that game come out and you actually do it. That's why these other games are trying to. There was a game that. One of my initial Kickstarter games I did um, was a called uh, Novus Eternal, I think it was, and it was a. It, I saw it at PAX West. I don't know how many years ago now. I'm looking at my my Kickstarter account right now. I um, think I remember what you're talking about. So this one, go back to my show more pledges. See, this is. Uh, sorry, hang on a minute. Um, Yeah, Novus Eterno, MMO, 4X, RTS, the largest strategy game ever. I kickstarted it, and it was supposed to come out in April of 2014. It was supposed to be really cool and really good. I saw it at PAX West, yeah, PAX West 2012, and I loved it. The guy behind it was like into the, he was like, loved the kind of games, and they were doing it, and it collapsed. Okay, it's totally Ooh. gone now. But, they finally, someone buy it out, came back again, and now they're making a new game, okay? And so this is one of the ones where I kickstarted. It's called Hades 9, okay? And like, whatever. This is one of the, like, except it's a Kickstarter that I put the money in and hasn't been an update since July of 2018. <laughs> wow. Did we did we lose Serge Aziel? What happened? No. Mm. He's here. Really? I'm here. Oh, he's, he's frozen on my screen for some reason. Oh, okay. Mm. So... That's why I would love to see Star Citizen succeed, where others have failed. So, I don't know. Project Zomboid? Zomboid. Yeah, that's it, it's a uh, low res. Eight bit. It's fun I, though. Eight bit. Zomboid. Let's yeah, see. it's on Steam. I I bought it on one of one of the. Uh, I think they had on sale for the Christmas special. Project Zomboy. It's an MMO or just a game? Yeah, you wouldn't like it. It doesn't have good graphics. I know. <laughs> no, that that's me too. I'm such a graphics snob. I mean, I well, I'm a graphics snob because I lived through it. <laughs> you guys who are younger, well, not Sir Jazio, but <laughs> Solomon. Hey. Wait, I I, re I remember playing um uh uh, uh what, what's it called Mist and Riven and Manhole on the on the Mac. Oh man, I loved Mist. Right, this was fine. I, uh, yeah. game. I might have been like heard. nine years old, but I still remember it. <laughs> it was uh, one of the first ones really college. trying to break the whole <laughs> graphics thing. Be good, you know. It was it was decent. Yeah. So I mean, I know that Alan tells me try this game, and I try this game, and it's eight gra eight bits. I'm like, Ugh. what sets me off a lot is my graphics. I know I know that graphics don't make great games. And there are some really great games that don't have terrible graphics. But for me, like I said, I have minimal time. Right. And I want to play a game that I doesn't remind me of what I did in the early days of <laughs> <laughs> dial up and slower computers and wait, wait, Dad, how's it going? I missed it. <laughs> so, when, I, when I play eight graphics, I feel like I'm reliving my past. I'm like, I'm beyond that. ColecoVision okay. and Atari 2600. Tandy. Oh, D and D uh, is not a point. Okay, you have not made any point by me playing D and D. Okay, that is a universal. Doesn't matter. It's of uh, the mind. It's the graphics of the mind. 
And by the way, you can play it online virtual, which I plan on doing, by the way. I'm going to launch a campaign of Cursor Stride through the Godmo activated tabletop thing. So, what are you talking about? My Dungeons and Dragon games are in 4K, dude. Wow. <laughs> you big dummy. Thanks a lot, Alan. Terrible graphics. <laughs> he has terrible graphics out of the board game, though. <laughs> Well, if you're playing the actual Dungeons & Dragons game online, it's different, okay? Or even Neverwinter. Well, Neverwinter's not bad. Neverwinter has a brand new thing where it's actually tying into the the Penny Arcade folks with the Acquisitions Incorporated. I heard on an, on Massive VLP podcast that they really kind of cool and funny. Was well, that game still around? What? Yeah. Ever? Neverwinter? Yeah, it's on the uh, Perfect World or... Oh, Mark. that's right. That's oh. the same guys who do Star by Star Wars. Sorry, Star Trek. Star Trek. Online, yeah, yeah. Ten years old. Well, the only reason yeah. why Star Trek's online is because all the whales are willing to support it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, I, you know, that might sound true. that may sound like a jab, but it's it's true though. Oh, mm. okay. I thought you were talking about the old that one particular Star Trek movie where they. They brought the whales back because otherwise the the planet was dying. Okay. Oh no 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 no! Like okay, so like people deep pockets. People. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. All right. Um. One more question. The discussion question. I thought would be kind of cool. Do we still have some time? Is is why do MMOs lose players? Oh, uh, I mean, that's pretty complicated, really. It's simple, but complicated. I mean, there there's going to be fall-off from people who just get bored. Right. There's going to be fall-off from people who, as we were just saying, they, they got on board because they, their coworkers or their friends invited them to come play. They got hooked, and then those friends or coworkers stopped playing, uh, and they just said, well... They're not playing anymore, so I'm going to go do something else. Or the game wasn't ex- um, something that the people expected it to be. Right. Um, yeah. I mean, I've done it myself. Like I said, I, I went... I originally played Black Desert Online when it when it first came out, um, and nobody wanted... They were all... All my friends were too busy playing World of Warcraft Legion at the time, and uh, I was trying to get them to come over and just try it with me and but all of them were like nah i don't need to try another game this is great because yeah. legion was a fantastic expansion <laughs> mm. <laughs> unlike uh battle for azeroth and so i i stopped playing and i was like well okay that was a waste of whatever i paid for it at the time i don't think it was that much um and then I came back because of a, of a friend that was saying, oh, that, this is way better. You should come over here and play with me. And I thought, well, if if Calvinist is playing and I'm playing, then that's two people. So maybe there'll be more people that'll be willing to come over and tr- at least try it. And then he quit. So <laughs> I was like, uh, well, OK, I'm done. Well, if you, have any, if you have any desire but, to play it again, let me know. I'll be here. I mean, I don't know, dude. You don't, no, no pressure. No pressure. I'm just saying. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I kind of think that you wouldn't quit on me, so that'd be nice. But, um, yeah, I, I there's all kinds of reasons why people leave. But, you know, it's I don't think that the genre is dead. Like, I see those articles pop up once in a while on Kotaku right. and some of the other websites that, oh, man, the MMO genre is just dying. People are leaving those games in droves. There's companies don't want to invest in them anymore uh it, it's dead it, it's a dying genre uh and everyone's moving to battle royales and well at the time now they're probably looking forward to other things but um because that market's completely saturated now uh and even like card games are getting that way uh you know it was hearthstone and now there's just everybody and their mama has a card game out and um <laughs> Yeah, it's true. Yeah, so it's it's just crazy that you know they they get into uh, these trends, these little subgenres, and it, they end up just everybody has to get in on it, and it just kills it. And uh, yeah. I 
I do think that there are far less people playing MMOs now than oh. what were 10, 15 years ago, but I it's definitely not dead. And I have seen a lot of people return um, in the past year. You just, you got to put out a good product, man. And I, I, I don't enjoy Final Fantasy 14 myself, but that latest um, expansion that came out with last year, man, it had a fantastic story. My and, son and his friends just loved it. They thought the yeah. best story, best game ever. And they added millions of people to to their uh, game, you know, that were playing it. So there, there's still people that are interested. You just gotta, you gotta put a good product out. Yep. Yeah. I mean, yeah. there are a lot. There are a lot of companies out there, Kickstarter or not, trying to create a uh, MMO. They're constantly trying to do this. You know, not necessarily really successful or not, or even similar to. You can argue Destiny. Destiny do is an MMO, but has an MMO feeling to it. And right, I know it's, that, it's an you know, online RPG. Koreans, yep, Koreans and the Japanese are trying are creating their own versions of MMOs that are trying to port to the West. Right, and so it might be decent. Um, so that may I. You're right about the fact that maybe the the audience may be less, but I wonder if it's because it's flattened. You know, the uh, days of having ten or twelve million subs on World of Warcraft are gone. Right. But again, most games don't need that many to succeed. They right. just need a hundred thousand subs to do it. I was playing Champions Online Tuesday with my friend, not Fred, and I was checking the the server, the population density. I bet you there probably wasn't any more than a hundred people playing that game. Yeah, because they don't put money into it, and it's a sub. Well, it's free to play and some sub stuff. That is just got enough to maintain it, and so as long as it makes money, it's in maintenance mode. Lot, maintenance mode. Duck it. Well, it got a little more than maintenance mode. They actually have been creating some new content. Oh, okay. Like the Camelot was sold to another company, and it's it still have things going. It even came up with a a recent uh, weekend of free to play to try try it out. So I don't know. I, I think that that they're out there, but I think the biggest I mean, like I said, I think the biggest thing any kind of game we play is based on quality content. Graphics over quality or over story will always kill it. Story will always win over graphics. It's the same with Pixar. I mean, Pixar, you know, is a, if it's a great story, they'll forgive you for your problems with your your animation. And then I also think about sometimes companies uh, deciding to trash things like City of Heroes <laughs> decided they had to and see Southside pull the plug, even though it was making money, or the terrible patch that was put into Star Wars Galaxies, even though I think that also Lucasfilm wanted to pull the rights from them and give it to uh, Bioware for SWOTOR. Um, well, but, you know, the funny thing is, it's a discussion we had this morning on Hear Me Out. Any movie, any TV show, any book, any game, any art, or anything... Okay, it's gonna be. It's only gonna be as good as you actually make it. If it's a good, good story, you know, maybe good graphics, good quality, you know, then people will, will buy it. Well, I think going back to to answer your question from before uh, about our MMOs dying, I think the landscape is shifting because yeah, if you look at, say, for example, and, th and this might be anecdotal, I'll, I'll admit it, but I still think there's some nugget of truth to it. If you look at Black Desert Online. Uh, Pearl Abyss or no Kakao Games when they made that you know it it did tremendously well in Korea and did decently well in the United States but then they made an MMO no I'm sorry a mobile port of it and that and en ended up making like three quarters of all Black Desert Online profits you know mm -hmm. and and it's just like people might argue oh well MMOs are are just shifting to mobile or whatever is shifting to mobile but, but then i then i would argue well then it's not really an MMORPG then because for in order for it to be mobile you need the massively part and if you're playing that game on a phone where you only have up to like 12 people at a time then you can't really call it an MMO but people still call call these games MMORPGs on mobiles anyways which right. doesn't make any sense to me but anyways i'm i'm massive multi online like right. massive multiplayer online role playing game on mobile i mean i guess you can argue if it's massively massive multiplayer online whether it's on a computer or a phone that's why the question about destiny 2 destiny 2 is a open world you jump in with players and it's not quite it's it's, it's a role play it's a story right i don't know, role playing your kind of role playing is it massively 
Exactly. And th- same thing with Fallout 76. You know, they kind of went Fallout on to 76. that yep. online route. So I think I think MMOs aren't dying, but you see like a subcategory or a subgenre of it like branching off into a new direction into games like Fallout 76 and Destiny Destiny 2 and uh um even uh what's that uh ninja that ninja game uh that sony uh warframe and stuff like that the warframe game yeah, yeah. so no i guess it's good yeah it's good so i opened that I mean, the question i knew it was kind of an open it really does boil down to the person because i said my my son and his friends love final fantasy 14 they thought that last one the shadow shadow bringers was just fabulous my son told me that was the story was awesome and great and I, while I played Final Fantasy fourteen, I couldn't quite get into it as much. You know, it's one right. of those games where you had to jump into a group to finish your mainline quest. And I always hate joining joining a pug because I'm like, I feel like it's going to be a terrible thing to do is join a pug. And my free my free company was always further ahead of me, so they weren't really there to tell, help me out. Uh, but I also was not very much a fan of the Final Fantasy music and the graphics. Why so actually about the animation? But I'll tell you, going. The music is good, by the way. Okay, if you go actually do a concert, you actually go to one of those concerts where they actually play oh, right, right. Final Fantasy music. It yeah. is really good. So, uh, but but that's why for me, I love Elder Scrolls Online. It was a much better game for me overall. But a lot of my friends didn't do it. Same with uh, Star Wars Older Public. A lot of my friends weren't playing it, so I didn't do it. Well, I jumped in and played World of Warcraft because I have you guys, or I mean, not Sergio. I mean, I know some wasn't play wow but i jumped in i play horde because i with people i love to play these games with people and that's where everyone's at i'll play it i'll jump to bdo i say when calvis was started playing i thought i thought i'll play it again because he was there but then he jumped out so i jumped into swore tour because uh jono streams was in it you know and it's like okay i'll do that but then i jumped into wow classic because of other people I mean, like which is agile and others and then Jono jumped to, do, to WoW, but then Jono stayed with WoW, but now Jono's on something else now. So I get it. You know, still people on do WoW. change. There is a there is a uh, squirrel squirrel type of effect that happens to all of us. It, yeah, I, I still yeah, play it, Star Wars Old Republic too. So if you want to jump in, let me know. I, I think the uh, you know I I had said this uh, last year. I I think it was on one of my own streams but uh or it might have been one of our joint ones but i i seem to have periods every year where i just need to take a break and i've learned you know what if you're not having fun if you're feeling like you're just getting in the game it's just not fun That's um true. It's okay to cancel your sub for yep. a month or two or three and go Absolutely. play something else, uh, and and then come back to it. Uh, and and I kind of almost want to schedule that every year where I just know that January through March I'm going to dump my subscription for WoW and I'm going to play maybe Elder Scrolls Online uh, would probably be the one I would go back to or you know, play other styles of games instead, you know, maybe go and, and uh, just invest more time building cities on city skylines or, or playing trains. the new Tropico or, or we got that ticket to ride just free on yeah. um, Epic right now. Uh, and that's a, I have the board game. I used to play it with my kids. It, it's that's super yeah. fun. Wait, that that's uh, originally a board game. Really? Yes, it yeah. is. Oh yeah, yeah. You know there's that. different expansions too. There's the European expansion, other ones, but yeah. Yeah, there's a there's a bunch of them. There's a they have the same expansions on the for the game, um, the video game as well. Mm. And it's you know, it it's good to just have a break, break up the monotony, go play something else. Or or even if you just feel like, man, I'm burned out on just gaming, you know, go catch up on Disney Plus or Netflix or Hulu or whatever and or do like I do and just binge watch every every episode of every season of The Office over and over again uh, until you're bored of that and you want to get back to gaming. <laughs> right. But um, and by the way, Alan, I do know what old school RuneScape is. Uh, you know. Well, I when I first read it, I was like, "What does that acronym stand for?" Yeah. And as I typed it, I'm like, "Wait a minute." Do 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 do. There's do a lot RuneScape, of people that okay? play that. It's not for me. I downloaded um, it and like, oh, the graphics and the gameplay yeah. was so clunky. And I'm like, 
It was like 10 no. million players or something like that, or I don't know, something insane. There are a lot of people playing it. Right. Um, and even, uh, what's he known as now? Susie Live, I think, right? Yeah, Susie yeah. Live. Um, he was Pastor Susie. He, he's back playing it as well. I mean, he plays World of Warcraft and some other games right. as well, but... No, he uh, he plays it like I play ble- like he, like I I'm AFK fishing. He'll have RuneScape or old old school RuneScape on just cutting trees. The AFK AFK uh, okay, cutting okay. trees like the same way I'm uh, AFK fishing. Well, yeah, yeah, I've noticed several times that he's streaming it and Nate I'm like Bra oh. right now is playing old school RuneScape. Oh, Nate is too. Wow. Yeah, right now. I see him online here. Well, there you go. Father Ironheart playing Oh shit, I fell in order in the rain. I'm watching Star Trek and Persons of Interest. Hey, let's get, which Star Trek, though? If you're talking the next generation, you're right up my alley. <laughs> oh, this is when they, this is when Retro Rewind Podcast does their their show that I listen to. Friday nights, okay. Um, right. Was there, a, you said something about we would answer a question after we got, Oh yeah. what, what was that? Sorry, uh, guitar had a question, and I know that the, um, uh, Solomon answered a little bit, but uh, when did, BDO is only twenty dollars right now, so I mm. think so. I think for permanence and even lower on sales. I thought about picking it up, but I heard a bad amount about about the grind. Oh, it's that's grindy. Say, it is kind of an old a hardcore game, not for casuals. Definitely not for casuals. No. Uh, and, and, and plus, you also have the criticism of it being a pay-to-win game, and it's yeah, the cash shop has a lot of items in it where it does give you a certain advantage. Uh, but I I actually don't use a whole lot, with the exception of two items. Um, but I I'm still able to overlook those pay-to-win items and still really enjoy the game immensely because of how grindy it is. Call me a what are those people called where they self-inflict harm on themselves? A masochist. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. You, I mean, call myself a masochist if you want, but yeah, I, I really do enjoy grindy games and having a beautiful, like, I, I get lost in the game because of how beautiful it looks, and it's very easy to um, uh, uh, to really uh, immerse yourself in the immersion. Uh, immerse yourself in immersion, I don't know. Uh, and uh, that's why I still play it. It is a very beautiful game. It runs really well, at least on my PC. <laughs> uh and it is, it is probably from the little bit that I did play uh, with uh, Calvinist and before on my own. Um, it, it really requires you to have a lot of time to mm-hmm. invest into the game. And you probably won't want to be playing another MMO beside it. It, it will be the only one thing that you... I mean, you can do like he's doing right now. Yeah, I could pull it off. In the background. And, and you know play something else but if you're looking right. for something uh oh next generation deep space nine you are my favorite friend no kenneth <laughs> but but you can be up there you're top 10 <laughs> <laughs> ken and solomon are up in those top spots but oh I'll thanks cheers to that you're at. <laughs> i'll drink to that <laughs> i love deep space nine and next generation but uh Kadar says, okay, I definitely would be a casual gamer. I don't like spending 12 hours at a time on one or two things. Oh, Kind of what took me out of Warframe. War- yeah. I'm not saying they are yeah. bad games. Warframe is fun. You're yeah. right. Warframe is a fun game, too. The video is definitely I, not for you. <laughs> as far as a, a casual MMO... A I, casual MMO. I would... St- Star Wars Old Republic. Those top three that I mentioned earlier really are the the easiest ones to hop in do something and you could literally only spend 30 minutes and and then go do something else uh guild wars 2 is kind of like that i would say uh yes so to a certain degree although you can if you want to invest a lot more time into it accomplish far more uh, but if you're just wanting to be casual, you can absolutely just go and explore in the game, and it's a it's a beautiful game as well, and it it's it's pretty fun. There's lots of different things you can do, and World of Warcraft. Um, you don't have to if you want to grind and really be the best of the best and get all the best gear and and you know be one of the real first you know kind of players with the rating and whatnot you can but if you want to just hop on 
and do your dailies. Uh, you know, you can spend an hour in the game and hop off and go do something else. Uh, it's pretty easy to do. Um, Solomon mentioned another game. It's escaping me earlier. There is another game that would be like that. But yeah, Black Desert Online, is it is super grindy, but it is super fun. And if if Kenneth N and and Bad Guy from Aladdin and all them other guys that I play with, Jono and um, Soda and her son, Captain Pyre, and all them were over playing BDO, that's honestly, that's I'd be over there playing that game. I don't see that uh, happening, it, though. <laughs> I don't either, but, I mean, mm. I I would follow my friends over to the other yeah, game because that agree. is the important part to me yep. is, is being with my friends. And, I agree with that. Uh, as grindy as it is, um, it's still a very enjoyable game. And like Salman said, I did the same thing, man. I The graphics, were they're beautiful. They're, they're really well done. And um, it's very easy to get lost in. And I, I like the combat system as well. It's really smooth. Oh, yeah, yeah. Very, yeah. very, um, what's it called? Real-time action oriented. And you have to press it yes. like, a, like a Street Fighter game where you press up and B and do all just different types of combat. Absolutely. Yeah, I love the, the combat system in the game. Yeah, that reminds me because one of the things that we want to do as, as part of this show is to, at some point, come back and give you a review of say a free to play MMO or even that for, for that matter, jumping in, taking a time set aside, play a free MMO and then hey, anybody in chat wants to join us on this, we'll do that too. We haven't decided yet what we're gonna do, but it'd be great to just kind of just go in, try a game for a couple hours, and get all everybody's feedback on it and review it and just to hang out together for a little couple hours, and enjoy a bunch of MMO. Sounds good. Yeah, I mean, it's not free to play, right? Uh, you have to pay twenty. I think it's the twenty dollars to uh, to purchase the game. Oh, uh, Black Desert. It's yeah, is yeah, it, yeah. It's it's, it's buy to play. Yeah, just one time fee. It's buy to pay. It's just yeah, I think like I already uh, bought it before. If you that? if you could catch it on a sale, you could buy it as low as six bucks. Because there's okay. different tiers. There's like a there's you know low, medium, high tier. High tier giving obviously giving you better stuff like better like a mountain title stuff like right. that. So if you get the low, lowest tier is like I think twenty bucks or maybe even less than that. And they'll sometimes they'll do like sixty, seventy, even eighty percent off sales, which is only Ooh. like five bucks if you start from the lowest tier. So you know, oh, it's ten dollars for the lowest option. Oh, yeah. is it ten? Yeah. So then if they have a sixty percent off sale, which they actually did, I think last week, you buy it as low as uh, five bucks. Do I have Black Desert Online? I don't think I have it. Catch it on sale for five. Yeah, I think it was. The lowest tier was like down to five bucks, I think, for Christmas. Yeah, right. Yeah, it was yeah, right now it's ten there. bucks. Yeah, like I said, it's ten bucks on now. I thought I already got this game. The Traveler's Package. That's the one I was looking at. Traveler's yeah. Package is thirty. That's the one the I got. Traveler's Package is fifty. Yeah, but again, don't. If you if you're if you like casual games, stay away from this. Like as much as I l would love to <laughs> advertise for this game, because I'm you know it's my main MMO right now besides Star Wars: Old Republic. Like I'm not I'm not gonna try to you know sugarcoat anything for you. If you're into casual games, do avoid this game at all cost. Well, I I would avoid. I hate to say this because there's some of my favorites are are done over in Korea and and China, but. If you're not wanting a grindy MMO, stay away from the Asian. That's true too. MMOs. No, that's true too. They, yeah, I uh, Blade and Soul. I played for a couple of years. And oh, that, did you really? Yes. Oh, what? I didn't even Beautiful know. Beautiful game and so far, I didn't even know you existed at the time, man. I'm sorry. Oh, no, I know, I know, but I, this yeah. is the first time I'm fi uh, I'm finding this about you. I didn't know you yeah, played that. Uh... I played it for two years solid and I loved it, but it was grindy. <laughs> yeah, no, it was. But I liked it. Not as grindy as some other Korean MMOs, but it was still grindy right. nonetheless. So that's why I would I would stick to I mean really Elder Scrolls Online is probably my favorite for uh that I recommend to people that are just wanting to be able to hop on. Um, you know, you buy to play it, you, you, you purchase the game. Um, they do offer a 
subscription that you can get that opens up more bag slots to carry stuff and to store your um, your materials, as well as gives right. you some little goodies and whatnot, um, gems and things that you can use to buy stuff every month. Uh, but you don't have to. You right. can play it absolutely free, barring that you do pay for the initial game, which I think is usually around 10 bucks <laughs> on Steam. I would and, actually uh, include Star Wars The Old Republic in that list as well. I would too, yeah. yeah. Like if you just want to yes. jump in and see a good story and just log off, like you could you could complete yeah. the entire storyline without grouping up with a single person. I don't know how... that You can't get more casual than that, in my opinion. It's true. Yeah, that's a good game, and it has a great story to it as well. Apparently, well, hmm. I have an account with Black Desert. Never bought it. Oh, I had a guest pass in 2016. That's right. Oh, I see. I see. Didn't they yeah, have I a tried it in free weekend or something? Yeah, it might have been when they were in beta, early beta. Yeah, because I remember they had that free weekend that um, a lot of us were playing, and that was in 2016, I think. Uh, 2016, man. It's a I long time ago. Oh, my gosh, that. man. I. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder why I was 15 now, years man. old. Oh, man. So guitar says, I definitely have played games doing one thing for two hours at most, but anything past that, I do get bored. I get that point. I have no idea how Susie is still trying to fight that one boss in WoW to get a mount of a lifetime. Well, Oh, yeah, Ashes having, of Alar! Having done uh, <laughs> Wrath of Lich King over and over and over and over and over mm -hmm. and over and over and over again, it's like, yeah, I wish you wonder it, but that moment when you take down the Lich King, yes, <laughs> the feeling, the rush, the oh my gosh, it's finally done, is just a fantastic feeling. So yeah. that's why I, TV... yeah, I'm the same way. I I love that they don't just hand it to you on the first attempt. That you know, first you've got to you've got to beat the boss, and then you're not even sure if you're going to get that drop. Right. And I like that challenge. I like that I don't just kill the boss and, and instantly get what I'm looking for and never go back to that dungeon again. Uh to me that's that's part of the fun of it and it giving you that, like Kenneth and just said, that feeling of yes, I got it, you know, and and it's like uh well, I'm gonna date myself again. I get ready for the boomer signs. Uh <laughs> You know, it's like when you got the little tattoos uh, from the your 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 Cracker Jacks box. You know that that was like the cool thing to have as a kid. Dang, you are you old. Know, reach in there. Yeah, I know. I'm just I know. <laughs> <laughs> no, if it's if for what it's worth, I remember those too. We we had those in my generation <laughs> yeah. as well. That or the mood ring, super <laughs> cool. But you know, it it's just awesome uh, when you finally get it. It's just that. Yep. feeling of i worked for this and uh it was just mentioned the ashes of lar from uh burning crusade i still don't have that i've been playing the game since it came out in 2004 so i still don't well of course that was 2006 when uh actually i think the dungeon came out till year after that but anyway the expansion was 2006 and i still don't have that mount and I can tell you, the day I get that mount, I'm going to Chick Fil A, and I'm going to get like everything on the menu, and I'm going to celebrate. <laughs> like Alan said, to be the boss, you got to beat the boss. Yeah, yeah. You're not a boomer, Josiel. Oh, gotcha. Not that, that old. I'm 46. I'm 46. I'm there. I'm I'm not young enough to be Kenneth and son. So. Yeah, <laughs> I, 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 so close no enough. Guitars. I could maybe be his younger oopsie uh, yeah. brother. <laughs> no, brother, and oopsie yeah. brother. His oopsie brother. So, I mean, guitars. You know, we are we done, but three oops. different. Well, not three different generations. Well, yeah, yeah, three different generations. Are you, you're a millennial, not millennial. Anyways, um, Who playing mean? MMOs, and so we're here to help you to make sure that you get the best out of the MMO because we love it and we want others to love it too. We think it's great. I understand what the what the cutoff is, Alan. Thank you so much. But there's also some <laughs> other websites that point out that there's a 64 may not be the cutoff. They might point at 60 or 62. That's why, anyway. Well, I'm 73, so I'm Gen X. Yeah. I, I think, wait, is 
Solomon millennial or not? Uh, like, te- like technically, yeah. Right? I'm like I'm like one of the first millennials. Different generation. Mm. Yeah. All right. Probably four different. I am 20 at this point. I do love the community of MMOs, although there are some sour apples. It's pretty enjoyable. <laughs> oh my gosh, guitars! Oh, you. <laughs> I have run across so many, so many toxic people in MMOs. Oh yeah. Um, my brother was when I went to his house one time. I saw the icon on his computer for for World of Work. I go, you play WoW? He goes, yeah. But I'm done playing it because I I've all been doing soloing. Well, you should join a group. I goes, yeah. I go, yes, you're right. Most groups are toxic, but join me. We'll build a guild, we'll build a group, and we'll have fun. And we did. So if you get the right people, the right group, and the right thing, it, it's 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 wonderful. There are unfortunately pugs, you know, pickup groups that are terrible, and you deal with it sometimes, but you accept it. CS:GO, that is nothing but toxic sludge. <laughs> Even more so than League of Legends. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh yeah, Overwatch. That's pretty. Baron's toxic, chat right? in WoW. Well, I used to be a guild master in a more what you call Eden Eternal. Ooh, I've never played Eden Eternal. Never even heard of it. I think I've heard of it. It's been a. Mm. Still, it's just, still, still even exist. I Eden don't Eternal. think so. I'll let you look it up. Yeah, he says yes. I'm too lazy. <laughs> Eden Eternal is still around. Oh, is it? It's a website for it. Looks looks anime ish. <laughs> it is. So is that is that wrapping things up now? I'm just yeah. I'm just working. Mm. Yep. No, we're just chatting now. So yeah, asking okay. questions in the chat. So yeah. yeah. That was our basic show. The idea to talk about a big mainline MMO, talk about some smaller MMOs, ask some questions, discussion, chat with chat. And just show share with all you guys our love for MMOs and just yeah, pass on any information that we might have to you as well as you guys passing off information to us. So 